Good evening. I'm Brother Steve Littleton with Gibson Baptist Church, welcoming you to our Wednesday night Bible study. All believers have one common enemy. His name is Satan. He's been after us since the Garden of Eden, and he's not let up since. Scripture tells us that he's roaming to and fro all over the place, all over the earth, like a lion, a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's coming after us as believers, as Christians. We all have this common enemy together. We are being pursued. Charles Spurgeon once said, and I quote, the great tyrant has not forgotten you, and he designs your capture and re-enslavement. Satan wants to cause people never to find their way to salvation. He wants to throw believers off track. He wants to cause us to stumble and to fall and to, to doubt. He wants to discourage us. He wants to dishearten us. He wants to cause us to lose faith in God. He wants you to see no way out of the struggles in your life. He wants you to see no light at the end of the tunnel. Well, our text tonight, it, it finds the children of Israel with their back against the wall completely. Pharaoh has changed his mind and he threw everything he had toward recapturing them and returning them back to slavery. You see, everything that he was using the children of Israel for was out the window. He looked out and he looked over his kingdom and he saw that no longer did he have a free workforce. No longer were his construction projects continuing on. Everything had ground to a halt. And it was causing him a lot of struggle in his life. So if you have your copy of God's word, let's dive into it and see more about this story. Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 through 9 is where we'll be tonight. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Exodus 14, verses 5 through 9. Beginning in Exodus 14, verse 5, in the Christian Standard Bible tonight, it says, When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about the people and said, What have we done? We have released Israel from serving us. So he got his chariot ready, and he took his troops with him. He took 600 of the best chariots and all the rest of the chariots of Egypt with officers in each one. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out defiantly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his horsemen and his army chased after them and caught up with them as they camped by the sea beside Pihahirath in front of Baal Zephon. Would you join me in prayer? Father, tonight we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you for the beauty of it, a reminder of who you are. And God, tonight as we open up your word, we pray that you would just let it jump off the pages as we look at it and we study it to be reminded of who you are tonight. But Father, remove every distraction from our hearts and minds and let us focus just on you tonight. Give us a message that we can apply to our lives, that we can use, that we can remember, and we can honor and glorify you with. Father, we praise you, we thank you, and we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Have you ever felt like you were being pursued? Have you ever felt like the world was out to get you? Like you couldn't catch a break? Have you ever been in a situation where you said, when it rains, it pours? Have you ever felt like the enemy was all over you. Well, if you're a believer, if you haven't been there, it's coming. It'll happen. It's bound to happen. It's just part of life. But I've been sharing with you about the book that I'm reading entitled The Red Sea Rules by Robert J. Morgan. I've got it up on the screen, a picture of some of the cover of the book um, on the screen tonight. Robert J. Morgan the book, it gives us strategies for facing and dealing with difficult times. God's children, the children of Israel, they knew challenge better than anybody else. They knew struggle better than anybody who's ever gone through it. 
They basically have, they wrote the textbook on it. They got the t-shirt. They've been there and done that. And so this book, it, it chronicles some of the things that took place at the Red Sea with the children of Israel. Over the last two weeks, we've covered the first two rules out of this book. There's 10 rules that are given in the book, and we're on to the third one tonight. It's what I want to talk to you about of our study. And the rule three, I'm going to paraphrase what the rule is, but it is. it says, as our title for our study says tonight, acknowledge your enemy, but stay focused on the Lord. Acknowledge your enemy, but stay focused on the Lord. There's a parallel that can be drawn between Pharaoh and Satan. Pharaoh in our text, he was going after God's people. He was challenging them. He was taking off after them and would do anything he could in his power to capture them. And here we, we draw this parallel between him and our great enemy to believers who is Satan. These two characters, they never give up in pursuing their prey. They would give anything to capture their prey. Both of them are jealous of the God, the children of Israel, and the God that we serve. You see, Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they worshiped the sun god and many other false gods, but their main god was the sun god. Ra was one of the main ones that they worshiped. And he was a false god. Pharaoh considered himself, he wanted to be a god. And they were considered to be a little g god. And so he was jealous of the power that the real god has. Satan was in the same boat. He's covetous of what God has. He wanted to be God. He didn't want to serve God. He wanted to be God. So both of them are, are basically have the same characteristics. They, they want to be God. They're jealous of the one true and living God. And so neither one of them, however, would be able to achieve their goal. But they were willing to chase after it anyway. God defeated both of them. And it infuriated them, made them so mad they couldn't stand it. Satan and Pharaoh, they both assembled armies against God's people. They both tried to come against God's people. And notice in verse 5 that just like Satan, Pharaoh and all of his officials are concerned only about themselves. They're not worried about the welfare of others. They're not worried about anybody else but themselves. That's the enemy's problem today. He is so self-absorbed and on a mission to destroy God's children. He wants to destroy us because of who we serve. But it's Jesus' blood that has brought victory over sin, over death, over hell and the grave. Notice in our text that God allowed all of this to take place. He allowed his children to be put in a position that only he could deliver them from. Scripture says that he hardened his heart. He hardened Pharaoh's heart so that Pharaoh would decide to go after them. He allowed his children, his chosen race of people, to be put in a position that he was the only one that could get them out of. And the, the same thing is true for you and for me when it comes to eternal life. There was and is no other way besides a relationship with Jesus Christ to gain victory over sin. It just is not possible. Now, God may allow us to go through some difficult times and difficult challenges and things in life, but he will always use it for our good. He will always use it to bring about honor and glory to him. He will always put the spotlight on him some way, shape, form, or fashion. He'll not waste anything that happens in our lives. So when we resist the temptations of the enemy, it brings honor to God. When we trust God fully, 
and completely to see us through whatever it is that we're going through, it brings glory to God. And it shows the character of the God we serve to the world around us. You see, we have to recognize that the enemy, he's, he's trying his best to attack us in every possible way. And we have to be able to recognize his attacks. It's just like being on the football field. <clears throat> Excuse me. Each team tries to counter the efforts of the other team. It helps to know the other team's game plan. When you get out there on the field, you can respond to their attacks a whole lot better when you kind of know what they're going to do. Well, the same thing is true with the enemy. If you study his methods in the Bible, you find out how he came after people back in Jesus's day, and he hasn't changed. He's the same. His efforts are the same. His attacks are the same. He uses the same methods. So we have to recognize his attacks, and we have to stand up to those attacks by keeping our eyes upon the one who has saved us, the one who gives us the victory over these attacks. When we study God's word and when we pray, those are two ways that help us keep our focus. By studying God's word, not just reading it like we would the newspaper, but taking it and studying it, looking and seeing who the characters are that are involved in the story that's listed there and, and seeing what's taking place in the text and looking at the whole context of the chapter and looking at it and studying it and asking questions. And then we take it and we find an application to our lives. We can grow through that by studying God's word, by praying, by talking with God, spending time with him one-on-one. -on -one. It helps us draw closer to him to understand who he is and how we are to be. Another thing we can do is we can have fellowship with other believers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fellowship with other believers. We need each other, brothers and sisters. We need to pray for each other. We need to lift each other up. God has called us to do that, to bear one another's burdens. There's strength in numbers. God never intended for us to go through life alone. He still hasn't changed that. He wants us to fellowship with him and with each other. So when we serve God, even in the small things, it brings great glory to him. Even in the little minute details of our lives, when we're faithful to him and we do what he's called us to do, and we honor him by keeping his commandments, it brings him glory and honor. Well, if you read on past our text tonight, you, you're going to see that after that last verse <coughs> of our text, we, we see that even though the enemy caught up to them, it wasn't the end of the story because the victory still belongs to the Lord. The same is true in the battle of our lives. When things are going wrong in our lives and things are challenging us, the battle is not ours. It, it's God's if we give it to him to help us fight through it. The victory is all his when we place our trust and our faith in him. So that's what we need to do. God was the only source of deliverance for the children of Israel. Friend, he's the only source of deliverance for you and for me. The only source of deliverance from sin. The only source of deliverance from struggles and strifes. Does this mean that we won't have any challenges in life when we become a believer? No, absolutely not. In fact, you may experience more challenges, but only so that you can bring honor and glory to the one who created you. And heaven will be worth it all. 
in the long run. Whatever you're going through, whether it's loneliness, whether it's financial struggles, whether it's uh, health issues, whether it's struggles with addiction, or any other number of things that you could possibly think of, you just fill in the blank. No matter what it is, I want to encourage you to set your eyes upon Jesus, the one who can make a difference, the one who can walk through it with you, and to keep your focus there, to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because when he is your focus, there's not room for anything else to cloud your vision. There's not anything else to get in your way. There's not anything else to throw you off track. When you plot a course and you, you look at Jesus and you keep your eyes upon him. A trailer truck, a big tractor trailer truck, has no rear view mirror. Why? Well, for one thing, it's got a trailer behind it and all you would see in that mirror is the trailer. It's useless. But you don't need to be looking behind you. And if you do, you have the side mirrors. The key is to stay focused on headed down the road and keeping that thing between the ditches. That's what your side mirrors are for, to aid you in backing up and to make sure of what's on each side of you going down. But you've got tunnel vision going forward. You're focused on going down the road. When we set our eyes upon Jesus, that's what we're supposed to do is to stay straight on his path. It doesn't give room for anything else to distract us. You see, friends, you need to know your enemy, but more importantly, you need to know your Savior. Have you made the decision to ask Jesus to become Lord of your life? Are you focused on him and him alone? to help you through life's journey? Are you living for him every single day? Or have you possibly allowed the enemy to back you into a corner? Well, folks, I want to leave you tonight with some scripture that might help you. Scriptures that you can use when challenges arise. You see, we start at an early age memorizing scripture. A lot of folks look at it as busy work. It's not busy work. As kids, we, we have a lot of fun learning these verses and committing them to memory, but there's a purpose behind it. You see, when you memorize scripture, you tuck it away into your heart. You've got something to draw from when you need it. And so I encourage you to memorize these verses of scripture for when the enemy is on the prowl and coming after you, when it seems like everything is falling apart, know that these verses can help you rise to the occasion. Now I use the New Living Translation for these, but I give you the references so you can look them up in any translation you want to look them up in. These are just really easy to, to think of here. In the New Living Translation, in Daniel, Daniel 11, verse 32, says this, The people who know their God will be strong and will resist him. That's Daniel eleven thirty-two. 32. In James 4, verses 7 and 8, James 4, 7 and 8 says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Again, that's James 4, verses 7 and 8. Another verse is found in 1 Peter 5, verse 9. It says, resist him, speaking of the devil, resist him steadfast in the faith. 1 Peter 5, verse 9. And finally, Ephesians 6, 13. Ephesians 6, 13 says, use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil so that after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Ephesians 6, 13. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy. See, we need to know the enemy. 
And God has given us the armor to resist him. If we put it all on and we use it the way it's supposed to be used, we will be able to resist the enemy. We will be able, after the battle, to still be standing firm. Friends, this is how we face those Red Sea challenges, is by standing firm, by knowing your enemy, but keeping your eyes focused upon the Lord. I hope and pray that you're doing that. I pray that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you come to the realization that he is the only one who can save you. I pray that you would Come to him and agree with him that you're a sinner, that you believe that he is God's son and he died on a cross and was raised three days later. And now he sits at the right hand of the father. He rose again and he's in heaven. And when you repent of your sin and you turn to him in faith and call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. Friend, is that something you need to do tonight? Christian, do you need to come back? Have you strayed away from me? Do you need to, to come back to where you once were to get your focus back on God? I'd love to help you do that. Reach out to me. Send me your email address so we can contact each other back and forth if you want to. Send that to me in the comments below. But... Either way, reach out to me, and I encourage you to come back and join us when we are able to come face-to-face -face for Sunday worship at 1030 on Sunday morning here at our church. We should be able to uh, do that this coming Sunday. We should be able to be there and, and be able to, to physically see each other again. So please, those of you that are ready to come back to church, come on. Come be a part of what God's doing here in Gibson. Friends, I'm praying for you. I love you. And until next time, this is Brother Steve saying, may God bless.